Hey guys, and welcome to a tournament showdown between myself under the guise here of the Blind Bandit up against the one, the only, the Chad Forgrim, aka Mr. Grom Brindle. We had some insane games. We played a couple of games here in a best of three up against each other. I may showcase all the games on the channel because they were just that good, and every single one of them came right down to the wire. Uh, Grom Brindle was playing out of his skin. It was so hard to try to keep up to him, but we tried our best here. So for our battle line, we are going to be going with the High Elves. So this is me counterpicking his Dwarves with the High Elves. But then again, Grom Brindle has played against a lot of High Elves in his time, so he certainly knows how to deal with us and uh, deal with those pesky Chariot Spam. But as you may see from my build, I don't bring any Chariots. I actually bring none whatsoever. Instead, in my front line, I have a load of white lines dotted all the way along. Great AP. Can actually struggle a little bit in this matchup now. Due to the fact Rune of Doom can allow a lot of Dwarf Warriors and Longbridge to tear these guys to pieces. But uh, at the end of the day, they're still going to be cost effective and still do some relatively decent damage. On the flanks, we have our heavy hitters in the form of the Sword Masters of Hoeth. Wanted them on the side so they could whip around and just really start blending up the flanks of the Dowie formation and get into that juicy back line. They've both been chevroned up as well. So a very expensive investment, but hopefully one which will pay off for us today. We do have triple Eagle Claw Bolt Thrower attempting to outtrade any kind of two or three enemy cannons. And the reason that I'm confident in outtrading the enemy in this situation isn't because we're going to be out shooting them with the artillery. It's because that's going to help certainly. But we also have a Mage of Death down here on the ground coming in with Spiral Leech. Very good at taking down artillery models. And I want to dictate the play. I don't want my opponent to. So I really want to gain that early map uh, superiority and advantage over the Dwarf Forces. We do have Double Archers in the back here as well, and then up in the skies we have the Archmage of High Magic coming in here with Tempest, just in case there's any Gyrocopters, Soul Quench, and Apotheosis. We have Armor of the Stars to make us invisible for a little while, as well as a Book of Hoeth. As for my opponent, he did something that I was so confused by. He has double cannons hidden in the trees. Now, cannons do not receive the same buff that archers do when firing out of trees. When an archer shoots through a tree, if it's point blank range, that arrow will pass directly through it. But if it's a cannonball, it will indeed smack the tree. So it's a tough fight. You're kind of paying for both good and bad things here. Looks like he has lined up his cannons relatively well to fire through openings here. But they can indeed hit those trees just in front of them. Protecting them is going to be a unit of Dragonback Slayers hidden amongst the foliage waiting to ambush any Illyrian Reavers or sneaky skirmishers that I may have looking to pounce on top of the cannons. For the main battle line, we do have the Grumbling Guard out over on this flank. A load of Longbeards with great weapons in the secondary battle line should be able to go toe to toe of the White Lines pretty effectively. And then an insane amount of miners, a mixture of Blasting Chargers and basic troops. Basic ones in the front to absorb the enemy, and Blasting Chargers to be launched up and over their heads and down into the mists of the Carnage. We have the Warriors of Dragonfire Pass, as well as Forrick Ironbrow, who shall be leading today. Forrick Ironbrow, very competitive. The most competitive die pick by far is going to be coming in to the battlefield. He's coming in today with the Rune of Slowness, Rune of Speed, Rune of Wrath and Ruin, as well as the Rune of Doom. All very powerful spells. No Master Engineer, I don't think, so we're not going to get any of those pesky flash bombs. But nonetheless, it should be a good fun game. So the cannons are open fire now, lacing some shots down and actually aiming at my Eagle Claw Bolt Throws and taking out one of the artillery pieces already. So at this point, I'm in full panic mode. I need to shut down these... Um, pesky cannons as quickly as possible and that's exactly what we're going to try to do so we do pop a spiral each on them it is overcasted because we were out of range unfortunately and i really want to get them off the field as quickly as possible and we have all of our bolt throws aiming at the same unit though a lot of the bolts are actually going into the trees luckily we break down one of the cannons only a couple more to go Dwarfs are going to start to get pretty aggressive here, which I think is the right play. I don't think he can win this artillery duel, but he may be able to extract uh, three equal bolt for us for the price of two cannons, which certainly isn't too bad. I got a little bit of interest with the Archmage. I was relatively sure there was going to be some Slayers or something hidden, because he had kind of abandoned his cannons. So I'm simply going to fly up in the skies over top of them, and it looks like this cannon is going to be going down, just down to the one artillery piece now. I'm taking a relatively defensive approach. I don't really want to engage the enemy. Likewise, I don't want to pull back too much with my bolt throwers. One bolt thrower has actually been taken down now. And now I can see we've taken out one of the cannon crews. I'm actually going to switch all of my targets to Forrick Ironbrow and try to drag him down. I'm just going to leave the Spirit Legion to take down that cannon. And I will sacrifice having one enemy cannon alive if it means I can bring the pain on the enemy. Now, Forrick is very tanky. He has 120 armor. But despite this, bolt throwers and arrows will eventually drag him down. White lines charge thunderously into the miners. We're also trying to whip around the flanks a little bit as the Mage of Death does fall back here. 
Frolic is getting danger low. Blast from Charge doing decent damage to the White Lions, but nothing too insane. And the Archmage is actually going to risk a sneaky little charge in there on top of Frolic to try to get some nice damage. She can actually hit relatively hard on the charge, and it's going to pin him in place, buying more time for those Bolt Throws to land their hits. A load of Blast from Charges will be freeing him up here, however. We see the Rune of Doom does go down on all of his uh, frontline troops as those Longbeards come into connect. Brilliant time in there by Grom Brindle. Swordmasters will be starting to get a nice surround here. This is going to be a really fun fight for us if the Swordmasters can get that rear charge. Likewise, on the left-hand side, we're going for a similar tactic with the Swordmasters starting to run into the rear of the enemy. Now, it looks like a Master Rune of Speed does go down, trying to enhance the ability on these troops and enable them to dish the pain back onto us. Archmage, though, is going to be hunted down for Iron Ironbrow. Now, he is very tanky, but he is certainly not unsnipeable, and he's going to be driven off the battlefield. At this point, I'm pretty confident in him dying, because I have two Bolt for a Cruise attacking him, I've Spirit Leached him, I've Archer shooting him, so surely he's going to die. We'll see if that prophecy does turn out to be true or not. So the Archmage is going to fall back in the skies, and I'm trying to line up a juicy Soul Quench right now into the Miners and along the main battle line. It's not going to do as much as some Soul Quenches I've done in the past, because it's from shooting from a higher angle, so it doesn't really connect super well. I was a little bit disappointed with that effect there today. Swordmaster's doing a decent job. They're going to be supported by the White Lions, and we are carving apart the Grumbling Guard, who really have stood no chance. I like the Grumbling Guard, but hey, Swordmaster, however, this is what they were born to do. They were moulded by killing armor-piercing enemies, and uh, or heavily armoured enemies, and that's what they're going to be trying to do. Now, the front line is looking pretty bad for us. White Lions are being overwhelmed. Once the Longbeard's connected, it's become quite problematic for us. Cannon shots are still raining in, one of the cannon crew is completely out of cannons, the other still has all three on there, and the Archmage is going to be floating back, I wanted to finish off Froic Ironbrow, the Dragonback Slayers have been brought back in a defensive formation to help protect him, so instead I'm going to try to snipe out some of the cannons before these other elements can come back to pin the in. Froic Ironbrow down to just 600 HP now, looking really rough. Now the Dwarves have pushed through the front line, they have broken us, but what do they find on the other side? A load of Chitin Archers, we're going to be running away with all of our Archer units here, Trying to drag these long bids as much out of position as possible. Looks like we're a little bit slow on the micro on this unit. Who's going to take its time in falling back. The reason I'm trying to kite for the most part is to, one, give my Spirit Leeches time to work, give time for the Bolt Throws to bring the damage, but also for the Sword Masters to clear up these flanks. You can see the Sword Masters up to 112 kills and 99 kills on this side. They've done such an impressive job on this bit. That's so much damage value they've already got. Already a thousand damage value pretty much, and they've got over half their health left. Archmage does get hit by Master Rune of Slowness. Luckily, we did manage to get up into the sky. If we'd been caught there and surrounded by the Dragonback Slayers, that would have been a Day of Lords straight away, and I think it would have been game. Thor Guyenbrow does pop the Rune of Doom. He's managed to pull back into the trees. Just 200 HP at the moment, and I don't know if he's dead or alive. I kind of lost sight on him, and I'm like, well, I think he's in the trees. Maybe he's shattered. Maybe he hasn't. Who knows? Swordmasters on this flank have just broken three units there. The Grumble... Oh, actually, no, the Grumbling Guard just about holding on down to 78 HP and two models, and they don't give a damn. One Grumbling Guard, they fight to the death. That is some awesome work by there. They really do hate the High Elves enough there to stick it out. But imagine to break two units and kill another. The long bits of great weapons are our next target. But they are pretty tough. We're trying our best to kite the archers. You can see them peeling off now, taking away longbeards. These are quite expensive units, which we're managing to drag away from the majority of the battlefield. And they have very little hope of actually catching us. So we're going to continue to flee. Just flee, flee, flee from wherever we can possibly go. Swordmasters, as well as the Archmage, is going to dive down on the miners of Blast and Char is looking to finish them off. We've even uh, changed to our split shot from our bolt thrower, aiming at packs of infantry where possible. Both cannons have a bucket of ammunition. These guys don't unfortunately have a cannon at the moment. But what you can do, use up all of your um, ammunition with this crew. And then you drop them off and put the new crew on them. Looks like the cannons are unfortunately obstructed at the moment. That is kind of the con of having them in the tree. Sometimes, unfortunately, they can't bring their ammunition to bear. Longbeards are going to be receiving quite a few shots now from the Eclaw Bolt Thrower as the archers do continue to flee, dart around, and uh, buy me as much time as possible to clean up these miners. I'm also going to come over here to try to assist these sword masters who are now surrounded and being a little bit beleaguered. So their bros, the other sword masters, will be darting over here as quickly as possible, and they should be able to surround and slaughter these dwarfs, at least I hope. Dwarfs do like being surrounded in last stands, though. They're pretty damn good at it. Eclaw Bot for a crew is just about alive at the moment. Archmage is going to come over here and ensure their survival. I can still pop these guys on their artillery pieces. We've legged it in all different directions. But then once we've pulled the dwarfs apart, we want to move back together again and become a united front. And the miners have indeed been dealt with. Swordmaster's doing a fantastic job down here. It looks like the miners really are struggling now. 
beautiful target in priority though, coming in by Grom Brindle. Using those cannons to not go over my Lord, not go after my Mage, who can easily bob and weave and dart. Hit the infantry units and go after those Swordmasters, who are currently up to 193 and 186 kills. The Iqlaw Bolt Throws are trying their little hearts out right now. Still got all three pieces on them. They're going to be lining up some shots onto these long beds. The archers are actually going to turn to shoot. I'm trying to hope to uh, break these guys as quickly as possible as we have more white lines on the approach to box them in if they do get a little bit too close to our archers. A load of shots raining in now. I'm trying to find Forex so desperately at this point and to drop Spirit Leeches on him. He has 200 HP so close to death. So I'm lurking in the trees with my Mage of Death. And the poor Longbeards are getting absolutely annihilated right now. A load of shots directly to the face. I'm going to try to pull back with the bolt throwers. I know the white lines are nearby to support. We should be able to pin in these Longbeards and finish them off. So I don't even drop the artillery pieces. I just scuttle back and then switch targets. Because the Longbeards do, unfortunately for my opponent, break there. Now there's a big, big problem on the battlefield. A big, big problem. I'm going to give you guys like five seconds to guess what it is. Yep, you were exactly right. You guessed it. The Dragonback Slayers. Now, Dragonback Slayers are a nuisance for us. Why? Because they can catch my Bolt for a Cruise. They can catch my Archers. And I basically have nothing left to kill them. I have a few units of Swordmasters left who, yeah, they'll trade effectively into the Dragonback Slayers. But uh, they will lose to them. There's still a load of these guys. They're very, very healthy for the late game. So I need to chuck absolutely everything I have. If I have crewmen who aren't manning a Bolt for a they're charging to combat up against the Dragonbacks. If I have some beat up sword masters, only two of them left, they're going into the Dragonbacks. I do not want to chuck my lord into them at basically any cost. So Longbeards have been forced back. The Archmage done some good work there. You can see these guys are broken. And we're going to be flying up into the sky, bouncing out over to these Longbeards to try to save the second unit of archers. But the force pathing from these Dragonback Slayers is so good. They're chopping down the, the Elvish archers as they try to flee in their Elgi fashion. Big old axes, bam, to the back of the dome. So unfortunately for us, we're going to sacrifice some Bolt for our crew here. They're going to charge into the Slayers to try to hold them back. And we're going to point blank range buckshot these Dragonback Slayers and then leg it once more, trying to flee backwards there to the safety of the Swordmasters. Arrows are raining down upon them. They're up to 68 kills. Do we have enough to finish them? A lot of our bolt throws are actually starting to break and run for their lives, and that's a lot of our anti-infantry there. Fog Einbrow is still alive. I think hit him with another Spirit Leech, but it did less than 100 damage to him, I think, and he's still going strong. So we do have the Major Death coming back this direction just to pop another one on him and try to get him off the battlefield for good. The Dragonback Slayers, they've already killed one unit of archers. They're now on the prowl for the second one. And uh, they may well catch them. I'm trying to move up and around to escape these guys. And buy time for the Bolt Throws. A bit of a missed micro for me here. I actually have it on single shot fire from earlier. Rather than having it on that spread shot. So these archers are pretty much dead. We're going to continue to run though. Swordmasters will clear up all these other units. These miners, these longbeards. And we have a very healthy arch mage. Now army losses is getting very close. But just because army losses hits does not mean that you lose the battle. You can see the, uh, the Mage of Death has been hit by a Rune of Slowness. Likewise, we're going to counter punch there with a Spirit Leech. We do do the miscast because we're near Thoric, but down he goes this time. And uh, bye bye, Mr. Thoric. And with that, army losses will probably kick in. This cannon is almost out of ammunition, and there's nothing left for the dwarfs but these Dragonback Slayers. 46 models still remain. They're hacking, they're slicing, they're dicing, they're trying their hardest. We're shooting our own men to drag these guys down. Bolt throwers unleash hell upon them. We do have some sword masters moving over as well. That is 19 sword masters, certainly not shabby whatsoever. We do also have 14 coming back, though they are wavering quite badly. Swordmasters are up to 223 kills. Not bad day's work up against the Dowie. We are going to start healing them with an Apotheosis to try to keep as many models alive as possible. That Bolt Thrower cares not if you are a lowly peasant, a lowly archer, or a highborn Swordmaster. We're going to friendly fire you if it means we can drag down some of these Dragonback Slayers who are consistently moving onto these archers, which I think is a good play because the Bolt Thrower can do friendly fire and the archers would easily tear down the Dragonbacks if they remained in combat. Dragonbacks do manage to break off the archers there. They now go for a glorious charge into the Swordmasters. In comes the Archmage. In comes the Mage of Death. In comes more bolts. And look at that Swordmaster decapitating one of the Dowie warriors laughing in his face. War of the Beard or the War of Vengeance Part 2. The yeah, Dragonback Slayers are down to just five models. We do have more Swordmasters coming in. Unsheathing their blades in deadly arcs of blood and death. You see many of the dwarves being dragged down here. We also get another Apotheosis down coming on the Swordmasters, and that is going to be a game. Very well played to Grom Brindle. He is one of my favourite players to play in the entire game, particularly when we meet in tournaments, because he's a very good 
tournament competitive player, but he doesn't try to like break the rules or like super cheese the rules or anything like that. He's a good, honest, just hardworking player who has some beautiful builds, fantastic micro, and some good target priority. But today we managed to win at least this one. We do have more games in the future probably coming on the channel with Grombrindle. And uh, we need to get like me and Grombrindle on someone else's channel doing a best of seven at some point. I'd be so down for that. He's an absolute legend. Oh, I said lad and legend at the same time there. Lad legend. But uh, yeah, well played to Chad Forgrim in a very tough matchup. High Elves are definitely dominant up against the Dwarf, so to make it this close was pretty damn scary. There were some times where I thought I had lost it, where he was pushing through, there was long bids all over the place. I had lost all my infantry killers apart from a few dregs of Swordmasters, but the dreaded High Elf Kite managed to win it in the end. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll go through the damage dealt and damage value of all of these units in just a second. The Swordmasters performing... Quite fantastic there. But before we get to that, if you guys enjoyed this, make sure to leave a big fat thumbs up. Subscribe as well if you haven't already to the channel. Uh, you know, we've got a load of cool stuff I want to do and uh, reach out to more people. The bigger we are as a channel, the more I can bring to you guys, basically, and uh, the more we can spread the good word of the dark and this beautiful game of Total War Warhammer. Oh, got my voice there. Total War Warhammer. There we go. It's the, it's the end of the day, guys. So my voice is uh, dying just a tiny bit here. Uh, there are links down below in the description as well if you're into that type of thing. I have links to my Patreon, links to um, my Discord where you can submit replays to me, get involved in tournaments and events, links to my Twitch channel where I do bonus content. It's probably going to be every Monday and every Friday. On Mondays I will start to drop um, me playing a random game which isn't Warhammer. On Fridays I'll be showing off some good old Warhammer um, stuff basically this is what uh, was actually done on last Friday on Twitch you got to see uh, me go through a load of tournament games which is certainly a load of fun feel free to comment down below what you thought and without further ado let's hop into the real reason we're here all the damage dealt the damage value the kills and that glorious stuff so for our build sword masters absolutely phenomenal today 239 kills 17k damage dealt, 2162 damage value. The other unit, 198 kills, so not quite as good, but still very impressive. 1.5k damage value, 14k damage dealt, with no thunders to really stop them. They went absolutely balmy. They went crazy, decapitating dwarves, twirling their blades, hacking through armor with deadly proficiency. We did have a load of white lions as well. They performed okay, uh, really kind of getting overwhelmed by the long beards. But by bringing them, you force your opponent to commit to those forces to deal with them. And then the sword masters clear up the rest. 75, 71, 65, 58, and 62 kills. But the damage value in the mid hundreds, kind of around the 500 mark, 600 mark for those guys. As for the Mage of Death, uh, 675 damage value, not too bad. Had a rather thankless job, basically kill those cannons and kill Thoric in the end. The Archmage of High Magic did okay, 744 damage value, doesn't seem like much. But it was uh, nice to snipe out Thoric and kind of pin him in place. Use that fear just to drive away the Dowie Warriors. And at the end of the day, healing is also quite tasty as well. Archers, 540 and 663 damage value, some beautiful chitin as well. And the Eagleclaw Bolt Throws, 1140 damage value, 137 and 626. You can certainly see the one that Dai managed to dismantle in the early stages of the game. As for Chad Forgrim, the uh, Thoric Ironbrow, unfortunately, you know, 666 damage value, not the best, not the worst. Um, Kind of really struggled. He pushed in, thinking he was tougher than he was, and unfortunately for him, he did indeed get dragged down there. Miners didn't do too much, but they're kind of here just to blog us down and uh, hopefully whip around the flanks and deal with the enemy, like the archers and so forth. And at the same time, they do pin me in so those Blast and Charges can wreak havoc. 500 value on the Wars Dragon Fire Pass. Blast and Charges did okay, but nothing insane. The Ekron Miners did really good though, 947 value on them. As for the Long Bids, 660 damage value. 363, 528, 552. So relatively similar, to be honest, to the White Lions for myself. Dragonback Slayers, some beautiful micro in the later stages of the game. It might have been worth pushing forward with them slightly earlier. Uh, when both my archers were being kited in different directions and foot pushed away, then you should have probably advanced with them. I understand I wanted to stay back to save Forrick, but uh, I, I was able to do that with the Major Death anyway, and there wasn't much the Slayers could do about that. But still, 104 kills, 1.1k damage value, really nice work. Cannons, only 13 damage value on this one. The other one performing much better, 1,593 damage value. I really did give up trying to kill both cannons. Take out one so that artillery is not going to wreck my entire build. And then focus on other key targets instead, like Thoric Ironbrow. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was a really good fun one to play and cast. Until next time, peace, peace. And as always, stay awesome.